Now let's look at what happens whenever we change the pressure. We're dealing with gases here, so let's start with the ideal gas law. What are the ways to change pressure? Well, P equals nRT over V. We can change the temperature to change the pressure, but the temperature is going to affect the equilibrium in other ways. So there's going to be two main ways that we can, we can change the pressure without changing the temperature. One is to add more moles of gas. That would increase our pressure. Now when I'm talking about adding moles of gas, that's going to be adding moles of some other gas not involved in the reaction. If we add moles of gas that are involved in the reaction, that's going to increase the concentration of one of the gases. and We have to analyze it the way we just did. But this would be adding some other gas that's not involved. We can also lower the volume to increase the pressure. If you think about compressing a gas, that's going to decrease the volume and therefore increase its pressure. Let's take a look at the reaction that we've been dealing with, the formation of ammonia gas from hydrogen and nitrogen. In this container, I've got an equilibrium mixture of ammonia, nitrogen, and hydrogen. We're going to do two things to it. Uh, first, let's compress it, which would decrease the volume and therefore increase the pressure. Let's see what's going to happen. The pressure will go up. That's going to shift the reaction toward wherever there's the fewest number of moles, um, whether that's the products of the reactant side. So let's take a look at our equilibrium reaction. On the left side, stoichiometrically, for every one, two, three, four moles of gas we have here, we can produce just two moles of gas on our product side. So where is there the fewest number of moles stoichiometrically? Well, that's going to be on the right side, our products. So if we increase the pressure, that'll shift our reaction, in this case, toward the fewer number of moles, which is on the product side. So this is what we would get, something like this, where we now have more ammonia than we did before. I've got four instead of two, and then I have fewer uh, hydrogen and nitrogen molecules. If you think about this, what's actually going on in the molecules, whenever you compress um, the gas molecules together, wherever there's the greatest number of moles of gas, those are going to get compressed the most, shifting it to the other side. Let's look and see what happens if we expand the container, increasing the volume and therefore decreasing the pressure. Well, this is going to shift it the other way toward the greatest number of moles. Looking back to our reaction, the greatest number of moles stoichiometrically is on our reactant side. Four moles for every two moles of product that are produced. So this is going to shift it toward the reactants. And so if you look at my equilibrium now, I've used up some more of that ammonia, and I've got more of the reactants here. The big takeaway here with pressure if you increase the pressure, it's going to shift it toward the fewest number of moles. If you decrease the pressure, it shifts it toward the greatest number of moles. There's two ways to change the pressure. One is to add more of a gas. One is to change the volume. Also, just like with concentrations, anytime you change the pressure, the K value is actually going to stay the same. The ratio of products over reactants will initially change, but they're going to shift in order to bring the ratio back to that K value. Let's look at another reaction um, as some practice for this. In this case, we've got dinitrogen tetroxide, and it's going to form an equilibrium with nitrogen dioxide. What happens if we were to decrease the volume? Well, again, think about if we decrease the volume, that's going to do what to the pressure? Increase it. And if we increase the pressure, that's going to shift this reaction to wherever there's the fewest number of moles. In this case, there's the fewest number of moles here on the left side, just one mole of reactants for every two moles of product that we produce. So dinitrogen tetroxide is going to increase, and the nitrogen dioxide will decrease. Let's look at another example. What if we add helium? Now, helium is not involved in the reaction, but what it does do is increase the total pressure of, a, of this uh, reaction vessel. So this would be another example of increasing the pressure. Again, if we increase the pressure, that's going to shift the reaction toward the fewest number of moles. In this case, we'll be again shifting it to the left toward dinitrogen tetroxide, increasing its concentration and decreasing the nitrogen dioxide concentration.